afternoon, everyone. How are you? Great. All right, great. Welcome to our second professionalism event for this spring 2017 semester. Let excellence be your brand. When you are excellent, you become unforgettable. Doing the right thing, even when nobody knows you're doing the right thing, will always bring the right thing to you. This quotation from Oprah Winfrey describes the importance of branding. We have planned today's panel presentation to provide you with valuable insights into branding and how you can begin to begin, excuse me, and how you can begin to brand yourself in law school and beyond. At this time, I am going to introduce one of our esteemed alumni, Attorney Thomas Lyman. Attorney Lyman, when he's not in his race car and on the golf track, excuse me, the golf course, um, can be found racing yeah. and also helping to defend people who have been wronged, whether it be by others in different types of cases. He has litigated numerous cases in both Georgia State and federal courts and he handles appellate matters for his firm. Mr. Lyman is a member of the Georgia Trial Lawyers Association, the Atlanta Bar Association, the American Association for Justice, and he serves on the alumni board of Atlanta's John Marshall Law School. He is a graduate of the prestigious LEAD program, and he's also admitted to practice before all trial courts in Georgia, as well as the Georgia Supreme Court, the Georgia Court of Appeals, and he's admitted to the United States District Court for the Northern District of Georgia. Mr. Lyman graduated from Atlanta's John Marshall Law School near the top of his class, the top 5% to be exact. I think that is very He received the AJ and the Less Award for Excellence in Appellate Advocacy, and during his law school career, he served as the Executive Notes and Comments Editor of the John Marshall Law Review. Wow. Okay, he clerked with the U.S. Attorney's Firm, excuse me, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Georgia, and worked as a registered mediator in the Magistrate Court of Fulton County, where, while there, he mediated hundreds of landlord-tenant disputes. Also, he worked as a Dean's Fellow and Research Assistant for several members of the John Marshall faculty. As I said before, when he's not in the courtroom, he's an accomplished race car driver, and he races sports cars throughout the Southeast to this day and the United States. He enjoys playing golf, watching international soccer, and spending time with his wife, Lindsay, and their two children, James and Cleo. At this time, I'm going to introduce Attorney Thomas Lyman. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. Um, I, I hear that, and I'm like, who is this guy? Who are y'all talking about? Uh, but that goes to kind of part of the branding um, I think from the beginning of my law school career onwards to now when I've been in practice for a while, uh, this idea of branding is, is hugely important, um, so it's never too early to start thinking about. I think the way we're going to work today is um, we've got a distinguished panel of alumni here. Um, I don't have, do I have bios for, I know they can they're going to introduce themselves, it's a lot easier that way. Uh, I know a few of them. Uh, one, in fact, was a like a Dean's Fellow student of mine, so I like to think I did a good job on him. Um, maybe imparted a little bit of my brand or my idea into Mr. Salazar here. Um, but so we'll start with having everybody introduce themselves, and then we're going to go through, through some questions. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here. I know it's probably not, um, it's probably required, maybe not the best thing you'd think to be doing on a Wednesday. 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 <laughs> uh, but yeah, March the first. Yeah. Yeah, that's Wednesday. Wednesday. Lord. Lord. Uh, with that, I'm going to start. We'll start at this side of the panel and work our way over to Miss Solano. So um, Nick Salazar is going to start with his brief introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Nicholas Salazar. I'm a graduate of class of 2013 here in Atlanta, John Marshall. Um, <clears throat> I have my own practice in Chambly focusing primarily on personal injury, family and criminal defense. My market is 98% the Vietnamese community. I am Hispanic. I know very little Vietnamese, but that's the market I wanted to tailor. Um, while here at John Marshall, though, however, I was the president of LALSA during my 3 year. I was also involved in um, the uh, Asian Law Student Association as well as the Immigration Law Society. And I can attest to everybody that's here, I know all of them, uh, especially Mr. Lyman helped me so much as well during my legal writing class. He was my legal writing mentor. Uh, and uh, 
Dean Harrison Mercer, is that correct? She hasn't changed a bit since my <laughs> orientation when I came in 2009 or 2010. And uh, you are all in fantastic hands. So um, with that being said, I'll pass the mic on to my colleagues here. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Ken Lanier, and uh, I did not graduate in the top 5% uh, <laughs> of my class, but I, I did all right. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, you know, coming from John Marshall, sitting where you sit now, um, you all are, are in a perfect position in terms of, of starting the branding um, and going forth. Uh, my practice is in uh, downtown Decatur, uh, focused strictly on personal injury. So I don't do any other practice areas but personal injury, primarily car accidents, trucking incidents, uh, and so forth. And uh, I'm happy to be here and share, share with you all. My name is David Winnicher, and uh, I cringe every time I walk in this room because I remember the war wounds that we experienced here in this room, studying for the bar three months in a row every single day. But I graduated in 2012. I'm tremendously grateful for John Marshall. They're one of only two schools that gave me a chance after 50 applications, speaking about my brand. Um, I'm a criminal defense attorney. I'm licensed in Georgia and Florida. I also published an autobiography which established my brand which I kept on a low profile uh, while I was in, in law school, and I'll explain why in a bit. And I also have a nonprofit organization, the Nonprofit Engineers Curriculums for First Time Nonviolent Offenders. Um, you probably can imagine I have a little bit of a criminal history uh, in saying that, and that's why I started the, uh, the organization. But that's my passion practicing law and uh, creating curriculums for nonviolent offenders. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zyra Solano. I'm an immigration attorney, and my team and I help immigrants in the United States remain here with their families so they can achieve the American dream. Uh, I love immigration. I was participating in immigration at John Marshall Law School. I was the president of the Immigration Law Society. And uh, through that organization and some of the other nonprofits that we partnered with in Atlanta was where I discovered my passion for immigration law. And till this day, at least on our alumni page, and when anyone from John Marshall says anything about immigration, usually, um, I, I guess I started writing myself really early with that. Um, I have a law practice here in Atlanta. I took a non-traditional route and started my law firm immediately after passing the bar. And I had worked um, with attorneys pretty much since high school all the way through graduation from John Marshall. Um, my office is not too far from here, right off Fairmont Road. We dedicate our time to 100% immigration. I have another office in Birmingham, and we're currently expanding to Tampa. And I'm really honored to be here. And yes, Ms. Harrison has not changed one bit, and neither have uh, some of my classmates here. So thank you for inviting me, and I really hope that I can provide uh, some insight into your questions and some guidance and mentor in the short time we have with you. So there's some great introductions. Uh, the process we're going to go through now, uh, kind of piggybacking off what Dave said about this being really uh, some a tortured kind of memory for a lot of people in this room. I'm going to call on each individual and have them stand up and do the Socratic method. <laughs> or, no, anyway. um, we'll start with a pretty softball question. I'll just throw it to the panel. You all feel free to chime in. Um, and I might offer a little bit of feedback because I just can't help myself sometimes. Uh, what does it mean to you all to brand yourself? And we'll start with whomever looks at me first. Oh, Ken, sorry, Ken, sorry. All right. Branding to me means distinguishing yourself uh, amongst your competitors. It means identifying what's unique about you as your person and using that to your advantage to leverage your strengths to be able to attract customers, clients, and people. So, it, it, you know, for me, branding is, you know, how you portray yourself to the rest of the world. I would echo that say, statement. Basically, branding is who you are, and who you are represents a bunch of different things. So you have a purpose, and you want to make sure that people know you for what your purpose is. That's your brand. Your purpose is your brand. And so if you can establish a purpose early on, then you have your brand. Sir? Um, I agree with both, and uh, going along the lines of your purpose, pick something that you're really passionate about. Okay, I think this is too I'm sorry guys, I'm not used to the camera, he is. Okay, maybe I'll stop fumbling with it until we switch to the next person. 
Um, pick something you're passionate about. I'm really passionate about immigration, and even though I was born in the United States and uh, have a different background, maybe didn't necessarily go through the struggles that a lot of uh, my clients did, I really sympathize and empathize with them. Um, and I think it's very important for you to pick the one thing that absolutely, absolutely resonates with you and um, meets the purpose of why you're here, because we're all here for a purpose, and go for it. And don't care what anyone um, has to say about it, and share your message and your purpose with the world, and the work and the clients will just come with it. Nick, last but not least. Um, branding, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's, it, everything they said is correct. My personal experience has been branding is, is more like um, the outside of the package. And we'll get to that later, but there's uh, branding and then there's reputation. Like I said, we'll get to that later, but branding is initially what people see or what comes to mind. Um, it could take, take any brand. I remember when the iPod was really big. Um, it was really not an iPod, it was a portable MP3 player, but everybody called the portable MP3 player an iPod. It's the first thing that came to mind. So when somebody thinks of my colleagues here individually, what do they think? <coughs> but many times I've heard it said, you're known for the cases you don't take more than the ones you do. It, it all varies, but the brand is when people think of you, what, what comes to mind? Or if they think of certain situations, do you come to their mind? That's the initial brand, that's the outside of the package. And the inner contents, we'll, we'll discuss that later. And I think um, carrying off what Cyrus said, this idea of what is your purpose, and Dave kind of talked about that as well, like that's what people see. I know for me in law school, I tried a bunch of different stuff to kind of rule out what I knew I didn't want to do. So whereas Dave's a criminal defense attorney, I just knew I, that wasn't for me. So I tried to do as much as I could to try to figure out what did I want my brand to be, and it's ended up being I just generally help people. I try to help people put their lives back together after a negligence type car wreck or something that Ken talked about. Um, that kind of segues into this idea of what can law students do, and this is for the panel, what can law students do now to start building that brand, or, or what do they do to try to figure out what their brand actually is? And I'll just toss it up, whoever come, chimes in. I guess I, guess I can, I apologize for everything. Go for it. Uh, my best advice as law, to you as law students, the best thing you can do to start establishing a brand is know how to develop a personality and relate with your colleagues. Because more than anything, more than your clients, the people who are going to know you first are your colleagues in school. Uh, too, many, too many of my colleagues, you know, nobody here knows who they are, it's certainly nobody on this panel, uh, just do not know how to relate to anybody else. They don't have the people skills, and this is a people business. And if you can develop how to relate with each other, that's gonna take you leaps and bounds in your practice. So that's my little bit of advice. How to develop your brand, start developing your people skills and how to relate to people and really care for others and don't treat this as a competition, rather more of a cooperation. I would also say building your network while you're in law school because you need to find out where the pockets of resources that are gonna help you fulfill your purpose are. Um, for me, personally, I kept my um, personal history under the radar for a while because I didn't know if I was going to be barred. Um, I have 13 arrests and my purpose has become to help others that are going through the criminal justice system. I always knew I wanted to be a criminal defense attorney because I pretty much defended myself during those 13 arrests. So as soon as I got to school, I started looking for a network of opportunities that would be conducive to my purpose. I started an internship. I stayed there for a whole year. And while I was cordial with all my, my peers at school, I spent most of my time focusing on getting practical experience and developing that aspect of my network. I completely, I second that uh, very, very much. I um, had the same, you know, similar story uh, minus the arrest. I um, was interning a lot and, and, and working a lot as much as possible. And my first job was in high school, I, uh, my first legal job. I called a mock trial coach and I begged and begged and begged until she was like, fine, you can you know, come in and help. So throughout college and law school, uh, grades were very important to me, but at the same time, um, I knew that I wanted to have a, a law firm. I knew I wanted to have a business and I didn't want to work for anyone straight out of law school. That's, that was my purpose. I immediately wanted to have a business. So I did everything possible during law school to get as much experience in different areas, um, like was mentioned at the end of the panel, and then also 
really learning other immigration attorneys. I gave up a study abroad in Spain for an entire summer because I got an opportunity to work at an immigration law firm. Back then, it was very uh, stressful. <laughs> and um, at the time, I was a little bit heartbroken that I didn't go, but it served as the best foundation I had to take that leap after law school and after clerking there to really start this practice. I think for me right now, defining your objectives and goals, your, your passion areas uh, are important. When I first came to law school, um, I wanted to be a family law attorney, but I had an externship, an internship, and going through that experience, I figured out very quickly I didn't want to be a family law attorney. And so I, I really started to, to, to dig down and figure out, figure out what I really wanted to do. And it was personal injury. And so with that, you know, I started trying to, to go to lunch with attorneys. I, you know, tried to network at different bar associations. Um, just anything that I could be a part of to, to really try to start, you know, scratching the surface in terms of an expertise. You know, so when I did come out, I would be ahead of the curve. So I think the, the, you know, the one thing to do is to really start, you know, drilling down to figure out what you want to do and then leveraging that um, to expand as you continue to go through law school. And have an open mind while you're exploring um, those different areas of law because you might end up not liking something that you think you will and vice versa. Um, I guess another thing that we could talk about, it, we touched on this a little bit with, um, you know, Dave talked about helping people see certain things that are in the criminal justice system um, Ken talked about helping people similar to the things that I do. Why, um, why do y'all feel it's important to brand yourselves, period? Why, why is that um, an important thing? People need to be able to remember you. Your reputation should precede you when you walk into a room. As soon as you walk in, people should know your work product and understand what you represent. And so you want to make sure that your reputation is intact. And you know, the old saying goes, you can build a reputation, it takes forever to build a reputation, you can destroy it in one instance. But that's the key is focus on developing your reputation, not just with your peers, your opponents too. You're going to have, when I was in law school, I was a third year, pra I think they changed the term of it now, it's not the third year practice act. But during the third year, I was in the government practicing for them. And all those people I knew I would represent myself against them at some point, I would be on the other side of the tribunal. And I just kind of massage those relationships so that when I got out, they would know who I am, know that I spent some time there with them. Uh, I think if, if you don't brand yourself, someone else will brand you. So <laughs> you have to make sure you want to define how you're portrayed to the world versus them, you know, trying to peg you or, or put you in a certain different, you know, a place. So the sooner you do it, the better as opposed to, to someone else. My uh, biggest inspiration for branding is that, I don't know about uh, you as a first one class, but when I was going to law school, um, we had just were coming out of a nationwide recession. And the word on the street was that uh, Atlanta was oversaturated with attorneys. Um, so that was a common fear shared by my student, my colleagues. Oh, there's too many, too many of us graduating, there's not enough jobs. And I remember one day I was really stressed about that. And I had a, a bankruptcy professor which if I re highly recommend the class. I don't know if the professor's still here, Nancy Whaley. I emailed her one time, just out of the blue. I said, look, I'm really, I'm really nervous. I feel like there's not enough opportunity. There's too many of us. And she said one thing that would always stick in the back of my mind and said, there's always room for talent. And that talent is part of that brand. If you have that talent, you can be one of 500 different personal injury attorneys on the, on the block. But each of you represents a unique way of approaching that case or those clients. That's your brand. That's your talent, and that's what's gonna set you apart.